Here's a little sneak peek of what this yarn structure looks like. It's really, really cool. Hello, fiber friends. The other day, I found myself missing Vlogmas just a little bit. <laughs> I don't know about you, but Vlogmas, I, I just really love how every single day we do a different kind of spin. While I love spinning large batches of consistent yarn for specific projects, I also really love pushing my skills and trying different yarn constructions and textures and all of that fun stuff that we really do with Vlogmas. And I thought, you know, we don't have to wait till December. We could do some of that whenever we want because we spin and we do what we want with our yarn. So, I thought let's do a fun, structured, kind of technical, but just really interesting yarn. Why not? So, I started flipping through one of my favorite books for inspiration. It's Sarah Anderson's Spinner's Book of Yarn Designs. And there is a design in this book that I have come across mm, a lot. <laughs> I always seem to flip to it uh, because a lot of this book, it doesn't have a lot of color on the yarn because it's about the structure of the yarn, but this one's really colorful. When you flip through the book, it kind of pops out and catches your attention. It's a crepe yarn and the basic structure of it is to chain ply and overspin the chain ply, which I know a lot of us do anyway. <laughs> Um, and then take that overspun chain ply and ply it back with a single. What fun! So let's do that. I did a little stash busting to find some fiber for this project. I'm not sure what I will be using as the single that I ply with just yet. We'll find out, I guess, once we get to that part in the video. But to start with, we need something that we can do a three ply with. And part of the reason this picture of the yarn in the book is so colorful is because this is a really cool way to create a crepe yarn that within the structure of the yarn has color repeats that are kept intact. And so I looked for a hand dyed roving or comb top in my stash that had color repeats. And I came across this beautiful 100% merino wool braid from Three Waters Farm. The, the colorway is called Tank Tops. How cute is that? And I just think all of the colors in this are so much fun. But this is one of those that if you're not careful, you could end up with something kind of muddy if you blend these colors up too much, which makes this a perfect combed top to spin up for a chain ply. Because we'll be chain plying, we'll keep those colors in their sections. It will all make sense as it comes together, I promise. Uh, but for now, I think it's time to get spinning and I want to do this a fairly fine yarn. I'd like to uh, see if we can do maybe worsted or less. I'm saying that now, it might turn out bulky, we will see, but I'd like to keep it with more yardage and a little bit of a finer yarn. I think it could be a really cool project to use in a hat or, Something like that, we'll see. But for now, it's time to get to the spinning wheel. Let's get spinning. I've been spinning for a little while. I was able to watch The Martian, Emma, Encanto, which was fabulous. <laughs> a few other things. So yeah, it's taken a few hours to get to this point. Um, I have this much of the braid left, so we're almost there. This single is spinning up right at the 45 wraps per inch. So it's a nice, fine, and very consistent single. I have the dial on the e-spinner set to about one o'clock. If you look at it like it's a clock. And I am spinning this with a short forward draw.
just look at how lovely this turned out. There's the end right there. Um, but the rest of it, wow, it's just so pretty. I love watching all of the different colors go by as I'm spinning through it. That's just so much fun. And it definitely keeps a long spin interesting. This did take quite a few hours <laughs> to get it done. But that's just the way of a short forward draft. So it's time to chain ply this. I am going to get it put on to the hardworking Kate, wherever she went. I'll go find her. And we are going to head back to the e spinner and get chain plying. This yarn spun up beautifully and the chain ply came out so lovely and so even. I'm really pleased with how this yarn turned out. I went back and looked at the book and I was considering the picture of the example of this yarn construction. Um, in the final yarn there are two plies, right? And one of those plies is made up of the three, the chain ply. One of those plies is just the yarn. It's a singles yarn that then gets plied together. Uh, so that one in the book is black, which has a terrific drama. It's very bold, but I was feeling like I wanted something a little softer. So I put up a vote on my Patreon and I said, what do you want to see this plied with? Do you want to see it with a mohair or would you like to see it with a yak? And the yak won the vote. So we will be plying this with some yak fiber and I'm spinning that right now so let's head over to the e-spinner and I'll show you what that looks like on the spinning wheel. Now for this construction to work I want the three ply and the single that I will ply with the three ply to have about the same diameter. I want them to be about the same um, as they ply together. So I have been using my yarn gauge to check and make sure that the yak that I'm spinning matches the same gauge as the uh, merino, the three ply that I've already spun up. I get tons and tons of questions about my yarn gauge. This is the SC Twist Tool and it is at Paradise Fibers but they're currently sold out as of the time that I am making this video. So I'll have a link to that in the description if you're interested in checking that out and I will have another link. There are so many yarn tools on Etsy and you can find really cute ones like little sheep and little different designs, little mushrooms and all kinds of things. They are adorable and they all work just the same. And if that's not something that's in your budget, you can use a ruler. All you need to do is wrap your yarn around your ruler and see how many times it goes around in the space of an inch and that's your wraps per inch. When I put this three ply up against the yarn gauge, it's about 30 wraps per inch. Yeah, it's a it's a tiny bit narrower than the 25. So I think it's about 30 wraps per inch, which is pretty good for a three ply. Um, that's not bad. I wanted this to be a fine yarn and there it is. So then I'm going to pull some of this yak that I've been spinning, pull it back off the bobbin and let's see if we are matching. And we are, we are right at the 30 wraps per inch for this yak. So that's perfect. I'm gonna keep going at um, this speed and draft pace and everything because I'm getting exactly what I want it to be. This yak is a very soft, fluffy, and downy uh, feeling fiber and the staple on it is not very long at all, maybe an inch and a half, two inches at most, but it's just not a very long stapled fiber. And so, how do we spin this if it's difficult to uh, control such a short fiber? Well, I'm kind of making sort of little fake roll lags. So I'm taking, I'm taking the fiber 
pinching it between my fingers and then I kind of flip it over my fingers like this and pull some off. Then I just roll it over like that and voila! <laughs> I have, it's, it's a little rollag and that is helping me to be able to draft from that and it's giving me a nice woolen yarn and it's making the drafting and the control of this short stapled fiber much easier. It took me a couple days, but I did get all of this lovely yak fiber all spun up. And so now I am ready to ply these together. But take a look at the size of these bobbins. I'm not sure I have enough of this single to ply with all of that. So maybe we'll end up with a little mohair anyway? I'm not sure. We'll see. But I'm definitely plying a little yarn chicken here, or bobbin chicken, or something chicken. <laughs> Ply chicken. <laughs> I'm playing ply chicken. There is one thing that's probably a little hard to tell from the camera, which is that this is very soft and squishy, and uh, this is packed on there, and it's much more firm. So it might be closer than it appears. I guess we'll find out. We're playing ply chicken <laughs> to see if we have enough. Um, but if, if not, I'm sure there is something fun that we can figure out to do with the rest of this yarn. So let's get plying. I was doing a little plyback test just to see how much energy I have in this yarn. The trick of this is trying to get uh, enough twist that nothing is falling apart in the ply um, because one is a single and one is already a structured plied yarn. And that single likes to fall apart anyway. And I let this um, twist around. I was like, oh, it's too much energy. But then I looked at this plyback and it actually is a really cool cabled yarn. I might, I don't know, I might give this the extra twist and then ply it back on itself just to make this really really cool cable or is it a crepe is it a cable that's also a crepe can it be both i don't know but it's making something really pretty so i might experiment with that and extend this spin a little further than i thought i was and Apply it back on itself. I don't know. We will see. I haven't finished yet. I'm still plying. I'm checking in, but I am leaning towards plying this back on itself because I just can't get this idea out of my head that I could be creating an eight ply yarn because the chain ply plus that single and then double that is gonna give me an eight ply yarn and I feel like this is something that I just need to do. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so I am over spinning it so that I can ply it back and it just, the structure of it when it's plied back on itself just looks so cool. And it was the ply back test that tempted me into this whole idea of plying it back on itself. So that's what we're doing now. Surprise! <laughs> but I think it's gonna look really neat and um, I can't wait to see it finished. 
This is cool. This is fun. I love these just experimental exploration kinds of spins. Um, I think everyone should have these from time to time. Just play with it and see what happens. So back to plying. Well, this didn't turn out too badly. This is how much I ended up with left on the bobbin when the yak ran out. So not bad. <laughs> The next thing to do is to cut this so I can take it off the flyer. I'm going to use a center pull ball winder to put this in a center pull ball and I will ply from that. Every time I do a center pull ball for plying and there's energy in that yarn, <laughs> I feel like I need to like give it some kind of offering or something. To <laughs> Please don't tangle, it'll be okay. So, yeah, let's ply again. It's the third time I'm plying. So, two spins and three plies for an eight. I went back and forth a little bit uh, with these little plyback test things to see how much energy this has but also with a yarn like this it's important to visually look at the yarn and see if that cable is coming together and kind of snapping into place so I think I have it at a point that I like and so I'm going to try and keep it consistently looking like this but this is a really cool yarn I can't wait to show it to you all finished up there's a little sneak peek of what this yarn structure looks like. It's really, really cool. It doesn't look like much. But I guarantee you, when this is off the bobbin and into a skein so you can see how all these colors came together, it's going to look so cool. So let's do that. This yarn turned out to be an unexpected but really fun adventure. I have always really liked the idea of having texture in yarn but not having that textured yarn be super, super bulky. You can have texture in your yarn and still have, you know, a more standard kind of weight of yarn. This came out to about nine wraps per inch, which makes it a worsted weight yarn. And I could definitely see making a hat out of this, which is kind of what I was hoping for from the beginning. And what cool texture it has. I keep looking at it and seeing all these little details in there. Um, it just looks so cool. So this is my eight ply worsted weight yarn <laughs> that I made. I think it's a cabled crepe yarn. I think that's what I decided I would be calling it. And I like how the colors came out together, just all of it. This was just so much fun. There's so much going on here and it was just so much fun. So let me know if you have played around with plying applied yarn or playing with texture on a smaller scale like this one is. I think it is worth the adventure. You might discover some really cool things along the way.